Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I thought I would do a video about press cameras. Now a lot of you who have been uh, looking on the internet or eBay or have been uh, looking into photography you've probably seen the term press camera and obviously this means cameras which uh, were used or designed to be used by the press. Uh, the camera I'm holding right now is a Nikon F3P or press model and uh, this camera was designed for use by professional press photographers and it has a, a P next to the serial number indicating that it's one of the P models. Uh, this particular model has been uh, modified to make it more suitable for press photography by uh, increasing the size of the uh, dials and controls so it can be used more easily by putting a flash shoe on the top of the camera uh, instead of on the side which you would normally find on a, a F3 and by eliminating the uh, shutter or the, you know, the, the, the door which closes off the viewfinder because uh, prof you know, press photographers aren't going to be using this camera for micro macro or landscape photography and uh, weatherproofing, dust proofing and a few other modifications to make this camera more st st you know, sturdy, rugged and reliable. Uh, I, I'm starting with this camera because this was the I guess the quintessential press camera in the days of my uh, uh, you know, in the days I got into photography in the 1980s. Uh, it kind of gives you an idea how old I am. And the sound of these cameras uh, were quite popular in the media, TV, movies, and even music videos. Uh, if you heard the sound of the motor drive uh, running one of these cameras, taking photographs in those days, that meant uh, the paparazzi or newspapers or whatever were taking uh, photographs. Uh, this is, is a, you know, obvious this is a quite large and heavy camera, holds a lot of batteries. It's a big heavy piece of metal and usually mounted uh, heavy lenses on the front. You don't want to drop this on your foot. And as big and awkward as this camera is as a press camera, uh, it's actually a much smaller than where press cameras began. Uh, for an example of an old press camera, uh, I've got this old Graflex here. This is a crown graphic from the 1950s. And this was the go-to uh, uh, press camera for newspaper photographers for more than a generation. Uh, Graflex cameras began uh, being used back in the 19-teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and up until the 50s. And the 4x5 uh, sheet film format was the number one format for press photographers for a really long time. And this was largely because, uh, you know, it, in the early years, you know, technology progressed a little bit slowly. It wasn't until the war when things, be, or World War II, I should say, when uh, technology kind of took off. Uh, uh, Oscar Barnack perfected the, the Leica camera in the 1920s, but uh, for you know other formats, you know, it were sometimes used by press photographers. But for the mainstream, the 4x5 camera was the one you used. You can see this is. A large, bulky, kind of complicated camera. The Crown Graphic is one of the more advanced of the uh, uh, 4x5 cameras. It featured a, a built-in rangefinder with uh, the possibility for backlighting, uh, a sports finder, uh, which allowed you to take action photographs, uh, a mount for mounting a, uh, a flash gun, which held batteries. And a lot of these flash guns are, are hard to find now because the uh, it's what George Lucas used to make uh, lightsabers in the Star Wars movies. And a lot of um, Star Wars fans bought up all the Graflex uh, flash handles and have made them into lightsabers. Uh, a grab handle on the other side, a what we call a Graflex back on the uh, on the back here, which allows you to use a variety of sheet film holders, and you can even use roll film on this camera. And uh, and when you open the front, that pops down and. Uh, the front standard pops out and you have a set of tabs which can be sometimes one set of tabs, sometimes two or three and you would have different tabs for different focal length lenses. It's hard to imagine that you could actually uh, take uh, photographs quickly enough to, uh, you know, for uh, sports and uh, normal press photography with a camera like this, but some of the most iconic photographs in history were taken on cameras just like this. It's quite amazing and it's a really odd and unusual tool, but it worked. And uh, these cameras, of course, not used by press photographers anymore, but they are very highly sought after by uh, you know, landscape photographers and people who uh, love 
large format photography. And there are even some street photographers who are running around carrying these things, if you can believe that. Uh, if you're a press photographer back in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you can imagine uh, carrying a camera like this and carrying a, a, a bag or a box or a pouch with uh, two-sided film holders. You have to put the film holder in, take out the slide, uh, charge the shutter, uh, compose and take your shot and then uh, put in the slide, take out the film holder, flip it around, put it back in, pull out the other slide, take another photograph. And this was the way it was done for a number of years until Graflex came with um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this, I forget the name of it, the uh, uh, Speedback or whatever it was. It was used, sold by Graflex and Toyo in Japan, which allowed you to cycle quickly through eight sheets of uh, 4x5 film. And then, of course, uh, people began adapting roll film backs to these cameras, which made them easier to use. Uh, but people, as you know, the, the large format camera became kind of the this one's kind of a clunky here, came the, the standard for professional photographers and press photographers, so people assumed that uh, for press photography you needed a large camera. Uh, Mamiya came out with their own press cameras uh, in the 1960s, and the original version was smaller than this, uh, but featured the same lens mount and same film back, and uh, the camera was designed not to use 4x5 film, but ordinary 120 roll film, which was, uh, could be shot in anything from the 6x45 to the 6x9 format. Now, these cameras were quite popular and Mamiya sold lots and lots of them. And it's because they were a very simple, uh, rugged, reliable camera with very few things to go wrong. Uh, you could quickly change the film backs. Uh, you know, instead of change, putting in another roll of film, you could take a, you could carry, say, three or four of these film backs and just simply put them in, pull out the slide, and be ready to shoot. And also, these cameras could be fitted with a number of lenses, from 50 millimeter wide angle to a 250 millimeter telephoto. And the lenses could be changed, and the viewfinder would work without having to you change the cams uh, for uh, to adjust for the focus for the different lenses, which was an issue with the larger format cameras. Of course, you sometimes had to use accessory finders uh, uh, because you know the the viewfinder was limited to say the. Uh, uh, 100 millimeter, 127 millimeter lenses. Uh, to use the larger one, wider lenses, you would have to use like a accessory finder on the top or a mask over the viewfinder in the front for the, the telephoto lenses. But uh, these cameras were very popular when they were introduced. Uh, there was the original press, the Super 23, and the Universal Press. And these continue to be popular even today uh, among uh, press and magazine photographers here in Japan. And I still see people working with these. Uh, Mamiya wasn't the only company to make a large medium format uh, press camera. Uh, this camera is made by Konica and this is the uh, Connie Rapid Omega camera which is very more similar to the first uh, Mamiya press but much more sophisticated. Uh, this one features a shutter with a built-in aperture and lens or shutter speed system kind of like the large format cameras focusing knob on the side and uh, kind of like the, what I guess, graphmatic, that's the, the proper word, graphmatic kind of uh, winding and shutter charging system. This camera allowed you to wind the film and charge the shutter in a single movement with a single uh, device instead of uh, uh, operating two, or, you know, two different things at the same time. Uh, this camera was uh, extremely well made and uh, it, it's kind of a quirky camera but it simply works really well and there are a lot of die-hard fans uh, of this camera here in Japan. Uh, the film backs are easily removed and replaced like the Mamiya Universal Press. The lens isn't so easily removed compared to the other ones but with a little practice it's not that bad and it's still much easier to switch lenses on this camera than say the Graflex uh, large format camera. But as time uh, went on, uh, press cameras got smaller, and uh, this is a this is a press van camera, and obviously the name press gives you an idea uh, who it was designed for. And this is a 120 roll film camera, a folding camera which uh, simply pops open like so. There were a lot of press camera or folding cameras made in the 1940s and 1950s, but the press van is the most uh, friendly for press use. It features a uh, pop-up finder, uh, just like the uh, ones on the, the Graflex cameras. 
and a uh, very simple operation and adjustment. And an odd thing about this camera when it was introduced, it came out with a dual format system. And with a 35 millimeter adapter, you could use uh, 120 roll film or 35 millimeter film. Uh, this camera was made in the days when uh, 35 millimeter film was quickly displacing the medium format market. And uh, you know, I guess the press van company or the company which manufactured this uh, uh, camera decided that uh, they would sell more cameras if they could make it a dual format system. And these cameras did sell fairly well. They're not as common as some of, you know, say like the Mamiya 6 cameras and things like that. But they were much more uh, oriented toward professional press photographers and they were quite rugged and reliable for that job. Uh, by the later 1950s, uh, the writing was on the wall for uh, the medium and large format press cameras and 35 millimeter film, uh, the advances in the quality of the film itself and the sophistication of the cameras and the increased reliability of uh, a 35 millimeter you know, uh, cameras like this one uh, pretty much meant that this is where, where everyone was going. Uh, this camera here is a Canon VT and this one was uh, designed uh, primarily for press photographers. Canon cameras became very popular with press photographers, at least the rangefinders did it, in the 1950s and uh, had Nikon not brought out its, Ni its Nikon F uh, which which became the standard workhorse for the press. Uh, Canon might have had a better future in uh, photography. Uh, Canon's attempt at making a professional quality uh, SLR camera in the late 50s was uh, unfortunately a failure for them. And they continued uh, producing rangefinder cameras uh, you know, past the time that other people had finally stopped making them. Uh, this camera features a trigger winding system on the bottom. And this was a, a feature for press photographers to allow them to operate the camera more quickly. Uh, the earlier uh, Canon cameras were the ones which were most uh, popular with the press and these ones could be fitted with an accessory bottom which allowed rapid winding. Good thing about the Canons was uh, a variety of uh, high quality glass or lenses in different focal lengths. And in the 1950s, you know, mid to late 50s, if you went to a press event, you were likely to see a few Graflex cameras, uh, some Canon cameras, a few Nikon cameras, and a number of Leica cameras being used to uh, photograph these events. And if you turn the clock forward by, say, six or seven years, uh, you know, Nikon had pretty much taken over. Uh, you know the you know, the press photography genre, and that, that's pretty much all you saw for the next uh, 30, 20, 30 years or so. And, and then, uh, ironically, Canon has come back to be kind of the, the ch one of the top choices or the top choice of uh, professionals today, shooting in 35 millimeter format. But uh, yeah, uh, they got their start mainly with these cameras and it was press photography which kind of got uh, Canon off the ground in the 1950s and made them a mainstream brand. But anyway, uh, I don't have any more press cameras. These are the only ones I have on hand at the time. There were a few more which I would have uh, liked to have shown, but uh, in the future, if I come across those, I'll go ahead and, uh, and, and mention them. Uh, one of the reasons which press photography was, or I won't say photography cameras are so popular is because these cameras are, as they were made for professional use, they are very rugged and reliable. And even today, decades after they were uh, first manufactured, they still usually work you know, just as well as they did when they were first made. And this makes them really wonderful tools for modern photographers uh, who are interested in uh, continuing shooting with film. Uh, you know, they have a wonderful uh, uh, arrangement of features on them, uh, everything you need and nothing that you don't need. Uh, for example, uh, my Nikon F3P here, this camera actually had features removed to make it more uh, uh, attractive to press photographers. Uh, the most obvious one was eliminating the safety catch for opening the film door. Uh, most Nikon cameras, you have to uh, push a lever and then pull up on the uh, rewind lever to open the film. That was too slow for pros, so Nikon got rid of that. Uh, these cameras normally came with a shutter which closed the viewfinder in the back, which allowed for more accurate meeting if you were metering, if you were doing, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, astrophotography or macro photography or landscapes where your eye wasn't against this. Uh, this wasn't necessary for press photographers, so that was deleted. Uh, a few uh, features to improve the, the you know, press worthiness of the camera, the uh, waterproofing over the shutter button and the larger controls. Uh, you know, it, it's, you know, 
it, it makes it a really good tool as for people who are shooting today. There are fewer things that go wrong with these cameras and the quality of the construction is much higher. Uh, a camera like the uh, Mamiya Super 23 is a superb camera which can capture incredible uh, you know, photographs with amazing resolution and dynamic range. And no digital camera manufacturer today can match a camera like this, at least not yet. Maybe in, a, in another 10 or 20 years they'll be able to, uh, uh, to uh, have the same capabilities as one of these cameras. And also roll film continues to be manufactured and uh, is surprisingly reasonable for you know, the quality of photographs you get from it. Uh, the big old Graflex here, uh, these are still popular with people, but uh, 4 by 5 film has become quite expensive nowadays and larger formats, you know, like 8 by 10 have become ungodly expensive. But, uh, you know, if you want to take a photograph and blow it up to, say, uh, you know, big enough to put on a billboard overlooking a highway, this is the camera which will give you the resolution to take photographs of that quality. Uh, Anyway, uh, that's it for my film about uh, press cameras, and I hope that you learned something about you know the history of these cameras. And if you happen to come across one, uh, you know you should go ahead and you know for a reasonable price, pick it up and go out and use it. I'm sure you'll be impressed with uh, it, you know with what you get out of it. Uh, some of these cameras I plan to be listing for sale in my shop soon. Uh, this, not this particular one, this is my, my own camera, one which I've had for a number of years and which I, I love too much to sell. Uh, Super 23 I'll have available shortly and uh, uh, the Konica Omega will also be available shortly and uh, more, more other ones as I come across them. Anyway, if you like the video, uh, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.